Hello everyone, this is the Crimson Cure, welcoming you to the Crimson Tower, a place where we keep a feminine foot on the neck of the gynocracy, feminism, and black male misandry. So go ahead, pull up a chair, stay a while, and listen. my crimson eyes and welcome to the crimson cure channel i am your host femininity coach and author the crimson cure and this is my perspective so what are we talking about we are talk talking about little nas x industry baby and my reaction and perspective to it now i'm not going to show that video i'm not doing it you can go watch it after you watch my video you can go watch that video and see exactly what i'm talking about if you have not seen it uh, prior to this. So, but if you have seen it, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So basically, um, little Nas X, X is back at it again. We know that he's out of the closet. You know, he's openly rainbow. Okay. Whatever. Right. So they got him pulling stunt after stunt. Um, earlier this year, it was the kissing stunt at the BET awards. Now, uh, before that, it was the controversial video Montero. Uh, and now it's another controversial video called Industry Baby. And in it, he's dancing. He's in. He's going to prison for whatever reason, because a black man has always got to go to jail, always got to go to prison, always being incarcerated. Um, they're making light and joke of a black man just randomly uh, being incarcerated, being sentenced to five years in prison, okay? So when he gets there, he immediately begins to dance around with other black men, all of them black. This is significant. There was not a mixture of men, all right, that were doing these little Craig, they was basically doing the same kind of dances that chicks would be doing, twerking, you know what I'm saying, busting it open. There was even a scene where they were in the shower and they were actually completely naked, where they had to blur out uh, their man parts. And we know that male frontal nudity is not super common unless you're watching, you know, an X-rated film. Uh, so he had that. All of the men are black. All of the men are dark skinned. All of the men are muscular. These are larger types of men. These aren't necessarily smaller frame men. These are black men that typically represent black male heterosexual masculinity is what it is. And so he's dancing around with these men in a provocative, sexually provocative way. Uh, you got the prison guard, the zaddy prison guard. He's zaddy, would be a prison guard watching everything. And he's getting hot and bothered because there's always been a, uh, a homoerotic tie between an enslaved black male and a zaddy in authority. So we had that element and component. 
within the video. Then we had Jack Harlow, who is a Zaddy uh, rapper, and he's the only male that is interacting with the only female that is in the uh, video. So he's interacting with her. Interestingly enough, even though he is a prisoner and within the video, uh, Lil Nas X is trying to perform a breakout, he actually mockingly executes Jack Harlow. Jack Harlow is sent to uh, the electric chair. And I found that to be interesting because it was almost symbolic of destroying the last vestige of heteronormative masculinity because Jack Harlow was the only straight male there. And he was also the only one that was displaying actual masculinity, uh, heteronormative masculinity. Everybody else was twerking and doing their thing, right? All the rest of them were black. He was the only one not black, him and the uh, the, co the correctional officer were the only ones that were not black. So then we had him execute by electric chair, uh, the only straight man, the only heteronormative man in the entire video was, uh, was executed. And then they perform another provocative dance in the yard and then they break out of prison. So that's your synopsis for the video. Um, but here's my perspective on that. Aside from the obvious rainbow agenda and the obvious overtones that you one could consider racial, here, what I what that video, looking at that video and looking at similar themes that come across the mainstream media as it concerns black men, it really just points to me how black men need to be in charge of their own media. We desperately are in need of black male media that is created by black men for black men that actually represents black men because because we live where we live, because the value system is so backwards, because we don't really under, truly understand the concept of biocultiron, not just biology, culture, and environment in their separate spheres, but the actual transformative uh, properties of enacting change in each one of these simultaneously, because we don't understand moral, ethic, and legal, because we don't understand these concepts, they're gonna keep reinforcing and reintroducing these effeminized, emasculated versions of black men. And it's only gonna get worse and worse and worse and worse. And unless and until black men get together to actually create tangible, widespread black male media, this is gonna continue. This is not going to stop. You already have gynocrats that are cheering and rooting on rainbow tea party women, which is backfiring because it's taking their place. They thought it would take the men's place by feminizing them all. Not quite true. So where does the heterosexual black man go to get his voice heard? He's going to have to create the avenue to get his voice heard. Because if he doesn't, then people like Little Nas X are going to represent this generation and generations going forward of black men and what they're about. As if that's the majority of black men, as if that's the majority of what black men do. I mean, when we go back to the video, that going to jail, that incarceration rate, that is a serious thing that black men face collectively every day. They literally call it a school to prison pipeline, meaning indicating that even the very young black men are having these interfaces and interactions with law enforcement well before they're actually adults. Preparing them for the reality that they're going to be faced with uh, some type of uh, prison stint or jail or these these 
increasingly dangerous encounters with law enforcement. Incarceration rate and its recidiv uh, the recidiv recidivism rate is a serious thing that black men face all the time, more so than any other man or of ethnicity or race in this country. It's made it's primarily black men. And if you know anything about how the prison system is run, they're actually doing slave labor in there for major companies. Okay. So the racial overtones of this video are actually unfortunately appropriate. It's not a mistake that the one man that was in charge was a zaddy. Probably closeted. Yet having a homoerotic sensation towards the subjugated, quote unquote, black men that he was looking at. We need black male media and we need it bad. We need it bad. Black men have no other recourse other than to create the media for themselves. Because waiting on Zaddy to do it, he never do it. And his little lap dog, these gynocrats, they not going to ever do it either. The lap dog do what the master tell them. They're not going to make your image any better. They never have. They're only going to prop up black men who support the gynocracy. So even when there are black men in places to uh, influence the collective of black male appearance value, they're going to continue on with the narrative, with the gynocratic narrative that most black men are effeminate or they're weak or they're lacking their masculinity in some fundamental way. Or if they don't, they're jailbirds. They're going to keep going over these tropes over and over and over and over again. They're not going to stop doing that. That's what that video said to me. How desperate of a need it is. This is why it's so dangerous to try to cancel out Kevin Samuels, because whether you like what he's saying or not, he's still a black man with a large platform that is that basically is black male media. He's saying things that other black men agree with your everyday on the ground, average black man. He's saying things and repeating experiences that the average men have had and that they resonate with. And we got gynocrats trying to shut that off, trying to shut that down, but I don't see no petition to shut down Little Nas X. Where's that petition? Where's the petition to shut down all of the effeminization of black men? Since we got so much, so much power to make a petition and we so concerned about what's harming black people and what's not, then these things are harming your young boys. Where's the petition for that? Where's the petition for these uh for BET and the, the travesty of a show they put on? No, you you rooted for that. You was down for that. That was for the culture and all of that foolishness. You was ready for that. You was game. Where are the petitions getting together for all of these other mainstream media outlets? that portray black men in such negative ways. Don't nobody got nothing to say about that. But as soon as a black man blow up and he's saying some stuff that you don't appreciate that the gynocracy don't like, now all of a sudden it's time to shut him up. But you ain't went nowhere and shut up Lil Nas X or wrote no petition uh, for his record label that's really in control of what he do. He ain't in control of what he put out there to the public. That he the song is called Industry Baby. The industry. A baby is something that you control. Someone that doesn't have control over their own selves. Babies don't have any control over anything. That's why babies need parents and guardians and people that watch them and tell them what's going on. 
because they babies they don't have a clear understanding of anything because the song is called industry baby take note so he ain't running nothing they try to put up that a story is about little nonsense don't nobody believe that them record execs sat there and made that story up i don't care if he's really out of the closet every man that's out of the closet ain't flaming like that And like I heard uh, Tariq Nasheed say, it ain't that he's uh, he's trash, actually. Lil Nas X is trash. And he's not trash because he's rainbow. He trash because he's trash. Because we've had rainbow uh, black male celebrities that we actually love. And he said it was Luther Vandross. Everybody know Luther Vandross was rainbow. Everybody know that. But then nobody care. Because Luther Vandross, Vandross sing the house down. Okay? Then nobody care about that. Because when he... A home is not a home. Okay? When he got to doing that, then nobody care about what he did when the lights was off. And he didn't present that and make a big deal out of it any either. He just lived life. And when it was time for him to perform, he performed. And he was successful because he had talent. Didn't nobody care what he did personally. But I don't see no petition for Lil Nas X. Where's the petition for that? Since we're talking about what's harmful for black people, for black men and black women, where's the petition for all of this foolishness that's going on? Nobody got no petition for that. I noticed that. Didn't y'all notice that? Didn't y'all notice that it ain't no petition for none of that stuff? They be down, gynocrats be down for the goofiest stuff. And you really need to knock it off because you ain't got no petition to stop none of the real detrimental things. But you ready to shut a black man up. You ready to get rid of his channel or whatever else you can get rid of to make him go sit down and shut up somewhere because you don't want to hear about it. Because it messes up the delusional world you live in as a gynocrat. Ain't nobody got time for that. Told you we got bigger fish to fry. And we're not here to save the gynocracy. We're here to crush it. And one way that we crush the gynocracy is to actually produce black male media. That black men can hold in their hands and say this was created by a black man for black men for the edification, education, and for the progress of black men collectively. That's what needs to happen. And it's going to happen. It is happening. The A-game family is making sure that it's going to, that it's happening. Because we got the answer over here. That's what I need everybody to understand. We got the answer over here. No longer will we be saying we don't know how to do it because we do know how to do it. We do know how to have success. We do know how to enact change. Lasting change. We do know how to do it. They're not going to be the only ones with the answer key. So what I want to do is here's the solution for it. here's how we deal with it when i say we know how to do it this is what i'm talking about go back into my bio cult tyron series and take a look at those videos so that you can understand bio cult tyrons completely it's not just the three separate things biology culture environment it is when these things are influenced at the same time to enact some some sort of transformation as it says in the bottom the trifecta achievement of a synergistic effects of biology culture and environment as they simultaneously that's the key simultaneously interact to produce the energy needed for transformation regardless of the outcome being good or bad once we understand that we'll understand why we end up in the traps but then we'll understand how to get out of them and how to create our own, how to change that for ourselves. Because bio cult runs, anytime that is enacted, anytime that
that transformative process is completed, a value system is born from it. That's the connection between biocultiron and 10 life values. Because when you have proper biology, uh, culture and environmental change within your personal life, it gives birth to a value system. We're gonna get further into that as time goes on so people will truly understand what I'm talking about. But that's the solution. When I say we know how to do it, I mean that. We do know how to make these changes because this is exactly how they've given birth to a value system that we can't rock with that gives birth to little Nas X's of the world. And now that's supposed to represent all black men. He's supposed to represent what black men are about in 2021. Boop! Ain't nobody got time for that. That's not what black men are about. I refuse that. That is not what our men are about. So we're gonna show what black men really are about and what they really care about and what their value system really is. So I would suggest that, you know, we stop supporting these things. Stop supporting it. Stop, you know what I'm saying, paying and looking and all of this other kind of stuff. And we need to really focus and concentrate on the black male media that shows positive images of black men, truthful positive images. We ain't doing no capping. This is the truthful positive image because there is truth in the positive image. Black men are not just these derelicts that don't understand their masculinity. Time out for that narrative. Time out for that. We talking about real black men and real black issues that they face. So my question on the table is this, when are we gonna create and support black male media and stop supporting this gynocentric narrative? That's the question that I want people to sound off in the comments about. So go ahead, sound off in the comments. I would love to hear everybody's opinion on the video on anything that I said, I just want everybody to sound off for me. And I want you to like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you have not. I know, even though this is a premium, I know y'all didn't hit that like button. Go out and hit the like button. Help, help us us out in the algorithm, okay? So like, share, subscribe to the channel if you have not. Once again, I am your host, The Crimson Cure, and this was my perspective. Bye-bye, Crimsonites. Hey guys, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. And if you've got more to say on the topic, leave a comment down below. Also, don't forget to support our sponsor who so graciously supports this channel by clicking the description box and the link for A-Game at agameherbal.com. You can go ahead and get a 10% discount off of your next purchase using the code Kendra10. This has been yet another Crimson Cure production, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.